Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for this week's question and answer video. My name is David, I'm a life coach and I make these videos in an attempt to help you guys recover and heal, to help your journey a little bit. This isn't usually what everybody needs, this isn't exactly the help that you need, but if I can assist by offering some information, some clarity in your experience, please ask questions. Give me that chance to do that. Uh, let me know what you think of my answers. If I miss your question, I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, I want to answer everyone's, so please ask me again. Uh, let me know what you think and, and keep asking, okay? Um, I like to recommend something every week to you guys. This week, I'm going to recommend Adopt the Pet. This is Danny, Danny Girl. And I've had Danny for 13 years. She's been with me for a very long ride of very goods and very bads, highs and lows. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I've had her. It's been amazing for me. Um, they help us heal. It's an actual chemical process. And we can look in their eyes, we can pet them, and it helps us heal, literally. It helps us feel better. It helps us make the world look like a better place to live in. It makes us happier. Okay, it helps us trust people again. Same thing with people. If we look at people, look in their eyes, touch them, say I love you, give them gifts, this does the same thing too. But pets are great. Pets love you unconditionally no matter what. So please consider adopting a pet out of an animal shelter. A lot of them are put, being put down. During the pandemic 20 years ago, um, the, the shelters here in this country emptied out literally every pet, insane. And then when everyone started going back to work, they put them all back. And so pets need us. I feel like we are responsible for every pet on this planet. Even if somebody else discarded the pet, we need to take care of it, okay? And the best place to adopt or get a pet is not an animal shelter. Better than breeders, better than animal stores, pet stores. Um, mutts, mixed breeds are the best dogs to own. They're strong, they're healthy. Um, these dogs need love just like we need love. So adopt a pet. Please consider it. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into the questions. Now, I'm going to read, and to get this out of the way, there's three questions people ask me. I don't mind you guys asking me about this, but I'm just going to get it out of the way. I'm going to read the three comments first, and then I'll just I'll answer them all together. Cosmic Girl says, the two ladies are insane. I'm so glad you're finally able to speak out after holding your tongue for so long. Thank you very much, Cosmic Girl. And JRM says, Bruh, the one with the Truth Channel probably made her channel so she could talk to you. She keeps saying she's known you from the beginning of your channels when you both had six subs. Seems suspicious to me. Many borderlines especially plan these kinds of things out so they look like coincidences. They're very calculating. Then when you don't, didn't do whatever it is that they think you should do, you're screwed because you didn't do what you, you didn't know you were supposed to follow their plan. You get this type of behavior. Obsession and stalking are their hallmark traits. Absolutely. And the last one, Victoria from the Bay Area. Nope. Oh, no. Here, here's the last one is right here. YouTube lady. Yes, TBT, truth be told, is now attacking other creators like Bam Bam's World, etc., as well as yourself. Good you're getting the police involved. Val is trying to stop you going on Bam's and Armchair Detective channel, obviously. Trying to control your mind, telling you what to do. She's obviously apprehensive what may come out. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I'm sorry that this has come into the channel. I, for five years, have stayed pretty quiet about someone attacking me and making videos about me. Multiple, multiple, multiple videos. I've stayed quiet until now because it won't stop. It's infiltrating my channel. It's bothering my clients. I have even viewers. that ha I have a viewer that had to go to the hospital because the person attacked her. Now, there's somebody that's been cyber stalking me for six years. Six years ago, they, they contacted me right when I started my channel. And they had a channel, a narcissist channel, and I was naive and thought that because somebody else has a channel about being a, uh, an, a victim of narcissistic abuse, that, you know, I, I was excited to talk to somebody else that was, that's experienced this. I had began healing my journey years before I started my channel, but I never really met another victim of this like this. And I thought it would be cool, but she asked me to help her with her channel and she had some questions about her channel. She decided to contact me on Facebook Messenger. We exchanged some um, 
back and forth conversation about her channel. It was when two things happened. She started flirting with me and she started attacking Ross Rosenberg like she's doing now to everybody. She started doing that to him. I told her I can't talk to her anymore. And it was like the next day she came out with videos saying I'm a narcissist. I'm a narcissist. I'm a narcissist. She's come out with all kinds of videos, tens and tens and tens of videos and making up lies. It's a smear campaign, a narcissistic smear campaign. The only people that do this are Cluster B and it's been total textbook. <clears throat> um, the reason there's so many videos out right now that you guys are seeing coming out is because she knows she's been exposed. Okay. She has began other channels in different communities. So she entered this community, narcissist community, acting like a victim and started attacking other channels. Okay. Me and others. Then she started, then she entered another group about true crimes, about, about murder, homicides. And she acts like she wants to help this particular family, right? The Ruzek family or something. She wants to help them and she's just here to help. But if you go look at her videos, they're all just attacking people. So that channel, she picked another victim and started attacking them, this man, for years. She's made hundreds of videos about him, poor guy. Then she made another channel and attacked another person, made another channel, attacked another person in all in different groups. And she didn't want them to find out about each other because obviously once you find out she's been doing this to all kinds of different people, different channels, you're exposed. You're disgusting. If you didn't know that already, now it's right there in front of you. So I've been asked publicly to go on different channels to talk about this. People want to interview me about this. And she is freaking out, freaking out. So she's in panic mode and making so many videos about me every day, coming up with new lies, new stories, new accusations, because she doesn't want people to see this and know. She's trying to defame my character as much as she can before I go on and tell the story. That's why this is happening, okay? Um, I have got the police involved, finally. I have gotten police involved here in this country, but she's in England. I've gotten the FBI involved. YouTube won't do anything. And um, now I'm finally getting police involved where she's at. So this is going to stop. You can't keep committing crime forever. For her few followers that are encouraging her to continue to do this, um, just know that videos take a long time to make. So the fact that she's making one or two a day means she's not doing anything else. So you might want to stop encouraging her to be so negative with her life. You might want to encourage her to stop obsessing on people so much. And you might want to stop encouraging her to commit so much crime. Because if you really like her, even though you don't know her, if you really like her, why are you, would you encourage her to be so gross and so bad and so sick? Because she's going to go do this. She's not in control of her behaviors and she's completely obsessed. She won't stop. Even if it means going to jail. She won't stop. She can't. She has to go to jail. What you guys are doing, supporting her, is conspiring. You're conspiring, committing crime, and you're coming over to my channel and harassing me and doing all kinds of things that's illegal. So, you know, she doesn't understand how bad she looks. And when she has a few people encouraging her, she will continue. And continue and continue and continue. So, I am going to be interviewed soon, and I'm going to come out with all of it. All the stuff I couldn't say, I'll show. I'll show that she's a complete liar. She's totally crazy if you can't see it already. And she's scared. She's in panic mode. So that's that. That's out of the way. Okay. I don't mind you guys asking me questions about it. I, it's just too bad that this has gone into this because really, honestly, my channel here, I've created for you guys, not for me. That's why I don't talk about my personal stuff. It's all about you. And I want this to be a safe place and healing and healthy. So this stuff is gross. It's negative. I've, that's why I've kept it out for five years, but I'm not in control of it anymore. YouTube allows it. They won't stop. People are, are supporting them. People are attacking me. People come over and attacking you guys. I'm really sorry, but you can report this stuff. Okay. Um, I wouldn't get involved in arguments over there. It will go nowhere. Okay. Now that that's done. Sahar from Sydney, Australia. Hi, Sahar. Question, why lots of narcissists active on social media, on community as new age healer, Reiki master, or artist in different form? Thanks in advance, David. You're welcome. Thank you so hard. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, the, the mental health profession has failed us miserably. And there are 
amazing mental health professionals out there everywhere in every country in every state in this country but it has failed us they don't know how to help us most of them with this stuff and people trying to get help aren't getting the help they need and so i think a lot of people are searching for alternative methods than drugs and therapy which is too bad for the therapy so they're finding new ways to heal from whatever they need to heal from and maybe they believe it worked for them maybe it did work for them and they believe that it could work for you so they're promoting it um, you said narcissists active on social media or community as new age healer. So that's an easy way without any kind of education or certificates to get lots of attention. That's it. Narcissists want to be the hero. They aren't okay with being average. The person stalking me, for instance, why are they doing that? They want to be considered a hero. And they play the victim and, to, and then the hero, victim hero. And that's probably what I'm guessing these people do. I've been a victim and I'm a new age healer and I can heal you. And, and I, know the, I know the real way that heals. Also, it takes the attention off of themselves. So there's a lot of people that make channels in this community too, with narcissists that are not healed from it. And they want to not concentrate on themselves and they want to concentrate on other people. And this is very common society it's a it's it's a good way to heal to help or to heal together and help others but you need to heal yourself and unfortunately a lot of people don't and it's an easy way with no credentials you don't, you don't have to do anything just call yourself something you know and get lots of attention for it and not look at yourself and get praise and be the hero that's my guess what do you think Sahar? traveling man from Louisiana hi traveling man good to see you again yeah I'm just mad LOL, I'm not sure why or at what. It's just the fact that I was told one thing then treated the opposite. I'm glad the anger is here. Like you said, it's another step in healing. Funny thing I noticed two days ago, she unblocked me on social media after six months. What nerve? Who knows what that means? Guessing a Hoover is inbound. She's bored, nosy, or wants me to see something. It was an oh no moment when I noticed, but only because I have no idea why she would consciously go through the trouble of unblocking me. Well, if she's very unstable, she may not know either. And so this is about a relationship that failed, right? And there's loss. Doesn't matter what she thinks of you. You were in her life, you took up space and time, and now it's gone. The only way to heal from this is to look at herself. If she doesn't take accountability for things, then she doesn't look at herself because she hates herself and it's uncomfortable and she doesn't like it, so she won't look at herself, so she won't heal. And she unblocks you and she looks at you because she's not healed. And you're looking at her. You're looking at her social media account. If it doesn't feel good, try to stop doing it. I, I don't think it could help you. Because now you're, she's in your head again. Um, your, your question, or your, your statement, I, I, you're angry, you're mad, you're not sure why. Ex emotions open and we need to close them. We express them and close them. If you're in a traumatic relationship that means that it was too emotionally traumatic too much for your brain to handle and we shut down if you couldn't tell her how you felt if she didn't care if you couldn't express it you didn't you kept it quiet numb stuff like this then emotions are open still we need to express them and that's why we lose the source over time we lose the source of why i was angry if you're not sure why it's probably something from a while ago okay express it talk about it tell people describe it that's why it's really beneficial to know what our bodies are doing. That's emotions. Give it a name. That's a feeling. Okay. Know the source where it came from. We want to know what makes us feel good and bad. Don't we? We want to know what makes the people we care about feel good and feel bad. Okay. That's what's going on. I'm really sorry you don't feel good that you're unhappy or angry about this. Uh, anger is a stage of grieving, like you said. So hopefully this means you're healing. Talk to people, tell people, okay? Just be careful how we express anger around other people. That's all. Anger's not bad. Erica Valari. Hi, Erica. Question. Have you heard that people online are trying to stop using the word narcissism because it's ableist and offensive to cluster Bs as a disability or mental illness? Have you encountered the concept of ableism and stigma about MPD. I tried to agree to disagree, but I'm glad, but I'm about to get canceled in my own community. I'm sorry, Erica. If you're in a community that threatens to cancel you, you may not want to be in that community. It's, it's like, uh, it's like choosing to be a religion that says you're going to hell for who you are. <laughs> uh, 
No, I haven't heard of this yet. Doesn't surprise me. More and more words we're not allowed to say. Communication is vitally important, the most important, because it gets us what we need and want. And when you start taking words away, it means we're getting less of what we need and want, period. It's ridiculous. It just doesn't make any sense. You'll offend someone with borderline personality disorder if you say the word narcissism. Why? Why? And if I offend cluster Bs, how about you heal and not be cluster B? Um, offending. It's hilarious. You know, everyone, everyone's going to be offended sometime in their life. And it's just so much easier to learn how to deal with that than the whole world change. I don't want to get into politics. Um, I have not heard about this. I think it's ridiculous. Um, but, you know, I have compassion and empathy, so I'd love to hear someone with cluster B that's offended by the word narcissism tell me why. We're all narcissistic. All of us. I may have narcissism. Definitely sometimes I do. Maybe sometimes I don't. So does everybody. But you, now you're not, because I have some, you're not allowed to tell me, you know, you can't say the word. I mean, it's just, bad. like I said, I don't want to get political, but that's just ridiculous. No, I have not heard that, but nothing surprises me anymore. <laughs> uh, Emily from South Africa. Hi, Emily. How do you stop your mind from racing? Emily, I've talked about this a lot and a lot lately. Can you be more specific? Because I've, I've gone over so many like, exercises, activities, things that you can do about this and, and explaining it. So I don't know what to say that's new. You've been with us for a while, Emily. Um, how do you stop your mind from racing? So lots and lots and lots of thoughts going, your brain's going, right? Boom, boom, boom. That typically happens when you slow down, right? End of the day, nighttime, no one's around, finished with my work, now I'm just hanging out. Should, should, that is typical as our Day stops, we reflect on it and stuff like this. We have more time to think. Our brain goes boom, 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 more. So if that happens, try to be active. The best is new environment and environment moving. If you guys feel absolutely awful at your house because you've had a year, two years, several years relationship while you've been living in this house and now you're in the same environment, your brain's going to start still thinking it. Change your environment. Go on a trip, vacation. You'll see, oh my God, this is better. Change your environment. And have it move. The difference between running on a treadmill and running in a park is huge. Huge. The difference on a stationary bike and a, and a real bike is huge. For instance, just riding an electric bike around and not even pedaling, you're getting exercise because it's moving. Your brain sees it moving and it reacts that way and starts your breathing and everything, your heart racing up more and more and more. That's why, that's why uh, car racers that race cars have to be in good shape. Because they're going so fast, their brain thinks they're going that fast and they got to, you know. So by doing that, your environment moving, it's stimulating. You're in a different place. There's new things for your brain to think about, worry about, and it kind of forgets the old stuff. Be active. Be in a different new environment with things moving helps, okay? Talking, writing. I hope that helps, Emily. I hope that's something new. Uh, Cosmic. Oh, already read that one. That was the stalkers. Victoria from the Bay Area. Here it is again. I have a question. I was watching a TV show made for kids, and I couldn't help but notice a lot of mind control. Is this why they call it a TV program? Yes. That is why. Programming. You know what's worse than the TV programs? The TV commercials. My God, awful, awful. I haven't watched, I, I haven't had normal TV for years. And I, I even pay Google every month to not have a commercial. I don't see commercials at all. I happened to last year see some commercials and I couldn't believe it. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it was the show that was on or what, but... It was all, you're going to die, you have disease, you're sick, does this happen to you, do you ever do this? 
like things that like obviously everyone experiences, you know, like if you ever had a hangnail, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, you ever felt nauseous? Oh, you might have cancer and you need this drug and this drug and this drug and this drug. Then you need this drug and this drug. It's just disgusting to sit there and think all day that people are sitting there going, oh my God, am I dying? Do I have this? Oh, I need this drug. Okay. And then just, you need to buy this and buy that and buy this and buy that. Oh my God. Reminds me of a family telling you who you are your whole life. You need this. You need that. You feel this way. You shouldn't feel that way. You want this. Programming. Just like our parents programmed us. Yeah. Disgusting. Be careful and be mindful of what you're doing. Be mindful of your environment. You have a lot of control over your environment. You can make it negative or positive. Like the people stalking. Can't imagine how negative that is. The person you hate living rent free in your mind all day. And just keep investing in it more and more and more. Ugh. You can allow negativity in your life or you can have a really positive, clean, beautiful, smell good, feel good, look good environment. And, uh, or you can have, you know, people telling you what you need, who you are, how to feel, buy this, you need this drug, you're dying. I mean, God, dude. Ugh. Yeah, it's programming. It, 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 I don't think it's a, uh, I think they're not shying away from that. They'll say, yeah. yeah. Thanks. And Erica Valari again. Hi, Erica. Wasn't Google's motto, don't be evil? Epic fail. Yeah. I just saw an interview recently with the CEO of YouTube. Talking about harassment. Oh, we're trying to get better. She said, uh, their worst, the worst activity on YouTube, they'll tell you, look it up, whatever, is harassment and cyberbullying. Yeah. They don't care. YouTube is a company, a corporation a business. They don't have empathy. They don't have compassion. So don't expect it. The people that work for them, they lose it. They give up their conscience to the company. That's why they are nasty and they see nasty things happen and they go home and sleep fine. My petition, stop narcissistic online bullying. It's directed right at the CEO of YouTube, right at her. Her name's on it. And all I'm doing is holding them accountable for their own policies. The person stalking me uses my videos. Can't, it's copyrighted, but they don't care. The person stalking me uses my name and my photo and even tells people where I live. They don't care. I report all this, they don't care. The person stalking me, I report for harassment and cyber stalking, they don't care. So she breaks all their policies and commits crime and breaks laws and they don't care. The reason is money. It's just a business. This kind of activity, this gross attack, negativity, gross stuff, all of it, talking crap about people and posting garbage, it makes up 20 to 40% of YouTube's generated activity. That's what decides what they're worth. To ask them to stop would literally be going to any company, going to a store and saying, hey, take away 20 to 40% of your income, gone. They're not going to do it. The only way to do it is to where it, it, it surfaces and is so public that they do it to appease the public or legislation stops them. Google's motto, don't be evil. Yeah, unless we make a dollar off it. Keep doing it. <laughs> I mean, they literally pay people to be evil. So let's be realistic here. Once you have 10,000 subscribers, you can get paid for your content and you can do whatever you want to people and they'll pay you your partners with them. Uh, Sandra from Melbourne, Australia. Hi Sandra. These so-called, Oh, I already read that. Cindy C wants to share another channel. The respondent, Greg Ellis. I don't know if the channel's called the respondent, Greg Ellis, or your, or his name is just Greg Ellis. But the name is Greg, G-R-E-G, -E and Ellis, E-L-L-I-S. Thank you, Cindy, very much. I like that, recommendations. And that's it, guys. That's all. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your support from all the attacks I'm getting. Um, when you hear all this lies and nasty stuff about you, it's nice to hear some opposing opinions that are healthy and positive. Thank you very much, and thanks for staying. Um, Please keep asking questions. If you think this helps you, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. Let you know when more videos come out every week. Uh, 
vote up or down, share this video. Anyone that wants coaching, you can find me at daviddemars.com. Link is right down below. And always love yourself first. Okay, guys? And I will see you.